Glad you are joining me here. Pastor Kate will be joining. Hey! In just a second. She's trying to get the kids set up on something so that we can actually do class uninterrupted. I'm sure none of you know anything about that. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're working on right now. So, anyway, we're diving into. I can't believe. Okay, I gotta just pause for a sec. This handle with care series has been so good. And I can't believe it's almost over. It actually makes me a little bit sad because it has been so good. And so we're ending it at the end of this month. So next week would be the full week. Next week is still Handle with Care. And then after that, we're going into another series that everyone's going to love. It's all identity. Eight weeks on identity. The real you. Not the you that you think you are. Not the you that... Your family said that you were, not the you that your demographics say you have to be and you have to fit in to or do these things or be these things to fit in with our group. None of that. It's going to be straight, just what does the Bible say? Who has God created you to be? It's going to be really, really good. So unlike all the other courses we've done in Root Bible with our new website, whoa, that was me, uh, you have to register for it. So all of you families that are registered, those who are joining us live in part of the online classes, you have to register for the Real You class. It's a little bit different, but that way we can reach out to those that are actually in the class. So that'll be good. Welcome. Hi. Hi. Okay, well, look, that's some crazy hair, but you know, it is what it <laughs> we is. We made it on. Sometimes what feels like that's the biggest feat, like okay. getting on. I don't know if you ever have that with maybe getting on to our online classes. Like, if I can just get on, things will be better. But we're stirred up. We're stirred up mm -hmm. because uh, sin isn't something that oh, most people talk about. And we got a chance to talk to uh, kids, youth. And adults this week on the subject and what does the Bible really say about it because it's kind of a big deal when the father sends his son to become sin don't you think it's important for we us. know for us what sin is how to recognize what leads to sin once you are saved and you have the seed the new nature of Christ what it is leads to sin so you can call it out and deal with it the Bible gives that a that mm -hmm. instruction and we can teach our families to do the same it's a really big deal because so many people that we have an opportunity to minister to or counsel, it's like one day they looked back and don't know how they got to where they were. Yeah. Nobody equipped them with the readiness and the understanding of how to utilize the word, how to teach, teach them how to utilize the word in their new nature to walk out who they were and identify uh, what it is that leads to sin before it becomes right. sin because it's not mm -hmm. what's glorious then we're going to learn today is sin doesn't just happen right that's why we we get off like even our our main cue for in all the classes this week is what am i a sinner and in reality there's things that are not sin right. but they lead to it yep. and so no one just stumbles into sin or is a sinner without taking some steps to get there and right. so after yeah. salvation. Yep. That's where we're going. I'm After kind of jumping ahead. salvation. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, but remember also, I'm going to put this in there because we seem to separate ourselves in thinking towards others. Remember that you were a sinner before Christ, just like you were a baby before you were a toddler. So being able to see people in that mindset allows us to see them as being able to be redeemed by Christ just like we were not as sinners and we don't hang out with them right so exactly. the people that don't know God then we could teach our children the same thing that doesn't mean they become our best friends but we see them in the light that God sees them in the father sees them in and that is they too can walk in this righteousness and live a life right. separated from sin they too do not have to see the payment for sin being death they can receive eternal life and that new nature of God also so remembering that in everyone we counter otherwise it becomes and we'll discuss this in our next semester mm -hmm. it, th them and us right no god came to die for everyone jesus came to be the sin sacrifice for everyone all sin any sin that any child of god created originally by the father would uh face jesus came to take care of it and so we need to remember that 
when we're looking at others that don't yet know who they are right mm-hmm. that would be mm-hmm. like limiting all babies and i'd be okay with this <laughs> but limiting <laughs> all babies from from our existence because uh they're not yet adults so don't let them near us they 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 are messy i, I think and, i and... know some adults that actually <laughs> think that way <laughs> <laughs> just but you know what i mean this seems like a simple comparison but it's basically the same idea is that uh the world needs what we have because what we have is christ jesus that new nature and so we can't push them away because they're sinners of course they are that's the only nature they know right now we mm-hmm. don't exist in that nature we don't exist in a sinful um nature but we can reach out so that they can too receive the new nature right Yep. Okay. Here we go. Right? Yes. All right. Hit it. I just <laughs> jumped in. You know. No, it's good. I'm making sure we're still live on Facebook. This was okay, then to I'm going to go right to it. If you haven't, if you are in route and you haven't got this worksheet yet, you can also get it on the Facebook page. Um, I know you're going to look at it and think, oh, that's rather elementary. I would even encourage adults to do it because this is the thing. If we can't learn to surrender our emotions, our feelings to what the Word of God says, and keep it in check, I will tell you this, and and we'll discover by the word today that this is true, that emotions can be the biggest catalyst that leads to sin when left unchecked by the word of God. So when you are dealing with mm-hmm. unchecked um, or untransformed emotions and you just let them freely go, they are one of the biggest catalysts to leading you for opportunity of sin. Uh, uh, Some places it's called a foothold to the devil, right? Where you let your feelings supersede the word of God. So instead we created an outlet and this is obviously just skimming the surface, but do you know some people haven't even considered this? We live in a world and, and I say even Christians today are led by their feelings, their emotions, and the Bible is very clear that 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 is not to be so. Right. Every emotion that you can imagine is dealt with in the Word of God, and you are told in the Word of God how to deal with the emotion. What? You know, in a world where it says, oh, go by what you feel, your truth is your truth, or you're disappointed, well, you should be mad at that person, <laughs> right? Like, you're justified by your feelings. No, we are justified by the Word of God. And this is something we can teach ourselves and our families right away. We're not discrediting feelings. The Lord gave us feelings. They alert us of something that is in need of being redeemed by the Word, often. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now there's good feelings. If you're going to take away feelings, you're going to take away all feelings. No, just make sure your feelings are in line with the word. So this is a really cool worksheet. It's totally free. It just starts to get your kids thinking that direction. You gotta hold it up a little closer. Your teens. I know it gets all. Otherwise, it's all there. There we go. Okay. Yeah. So just what do we what do we do? Because I tell you, and if you step back and you just think of your last encounters with your children, Mm -hmm. or even yourself, what has led to uh, poor reactions, poor feelings, or even (laughs) um, uh, hindrances in their lives or our lives? It started with an emotion, right? I feel like I sense that uh, I'm I'm experiencing this emotion, right? And unchecked with the word. That's what led them into the possibility or coming dangerously close to sinning, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's funny how we have minimized so many things in our culture that the Bible actually takes a much harder stance on yeah. uh, than we would. For example, you, you might enjoy this one with your kids or it might just ruin your day. Um, <laughs> so I apologize for that if that uh, would be you. Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 26 Verse 18 and 19. I've read the Bible all the way through. I don't even know how many times. And I can say until when we were creating this course, I don't think I've ever read this verse. It is a little too challenging. That's really what I feel like. So what is it? Proverbs 26, verse 18 and 19 says, Like a madman, or some versions say like a maniac, shooting deadly burning arrows is the one who tricks a neighbor and then says, I was just joking. Tell me, tell me the oh, verse again. Oh, my word. Proverbs chapter 26, yep. verse 18 and 19. I think I had an entire year of my young existence where that was my life, trying to trick people. And then as soon as I was almost in trouble, going, oh, I was just joking. I was just playing. I was just messing around. Uh, even though I knew I was doing it to try to 
cause a rise, to get somebody else in trouble, to cause them to react in a way that I knew my parents didn't like. I don't know if you've ever had those kind of tendencies pop out in your kids ever, but this verse really hits hard. That makes it serious. Where in our in our culture, oh, I was just joking, immediately makes it okay. Uh, yeah, you probably hurt their feelings, but you just got to toughen up, buck up, little camper, whatever, right? When the word says the person that's doing that is acting like a maniac shooting, oh, what was uh, Kiara's version? Shooting oh, yeah. arrows of death yep. towards people. Holy moly. This is a lot bigger, bigger deal than in our, we would assume in our culture. And same way with sin. Yeah. Does the Bible say it's sin to trick people? It doesn't. Sometimes I wish it does now that I'm <laughs> the did, parent. Yeah. And now, and I was really glad it no. didn't when I was a kid. But it's one of those things that can be a stepping stone or a guide and usher into Living sin. Living dishonest li- lives. Yeah, Being lying, a liar. Uh, acts of wrath on the which opposite is, side. Is, uh, is then entering mm-hmm. into sin, which payment, according to the Bible, is death, right? Mm-hmm. So then you're entering, you're defying the new nature that lives inside of you, and you've you've given over by uh, what I read last night in Hebrews 12, you know, is that the hindrances and sins. Mm-hmm. Right? So there's hindrances that lead to sin, but we can catch them right up front by what Jesus says so clearly transforming your mind. You're like, oh, really? Really? Yes. By taking every thought captive. And you know what else? Emotion. That's why our verse for this month says, um, where your treasure is, there your heart and thoughts will also be. That is the original. And you can't even find it anymore. It makes us so angry. So it's the original translation of the Greek into uh, into our words right was heart and thoughts every translation has removed thoughts because they didn't like that your you know your heart and your thoughts would be different when the bible is very clear about our multiple parts and the very few like the least of which you can identify as spirit soul and body yeah deborah and i I was getting really frustrated because she's like this verse doesn't exist in spanish Mm -hmm. like you have i'm like Of course it does. I know a little bit of Spanish. Let me find it. I searched and searched and searched. It says, uh, there your heart will be. That's it in Spanish. And most of the modern translations in English even just leave it at heart. Or some say the intentions of the heart. Right. But still not drawing the separation that it is heart and thoughts. Two separate things. Mm -hmm. And the Bible differentiates <laughs> yeah, that's right. Differentiate between the two often. Now, I cannot tell you I have full knowledge and understanding of that, but I can tell you that the Bible is very clear that heart and thoughts, though knit closely together, are different. What you, what you, you know, it takes a thought to come out your mouth. So it says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Well, if you study that out, it's talking about it will influence your thinking so that you'll, it will uh, take over your saying, right? Mm -hmm. So again, one of the many scriptures that differentiates between heart, soul, which is mind, will and emotions, right? Mm -hmm. And spirit. And so it's like, what is that heart connected to? Well, it's worth studying out, but it frustrated us so much (laughs) that every translation we could find now has removed thoughts. They have, they're like, oh, no, because we'll heart sums it all up. There your heart will also be. No, because it's also what you're thinking on. And right. what you're thinking on will affect your heart, and your heart will affect what you're thinking on. Mm-hmm. They are very much two different things. And being able to identify those things is crucial. Well, even like what we're talking about, by the way, this is all introduction so far. <laughs> Just like what we're talking about today is we're diving into... The big question is, am I a sinner? And I've heard people say both sides. Uh, yes, of course you are. Romans mm-hmm. three twenty three. All mm-hmm. of sin falls short of the glory of God. Mm-hmm. Now it's by grace that we're saved through faith. You are still a sinner, but right. it's by His grace. If we can just squeeze in and you know do enough that we're not stepping outside of His no. grace, no. then then we are we're good, right? And I know people that live that way. 
Like, oh, I just gotta, I'm, I'm a sinner, but I know I'm worthless. I'm a worm, but I'm just trying to do enough good to just not step outside of that gray so that I'm not outside of God's umbrella of protection. Cause I know I'm just, I'm just a sinner right. saved by grace. And if, if I step out, I'm going to get, and, and so I just got to do enough to just go work hard enough. Just got to keep myself in that safe zone. And then they fail, and they fail, and they fail, and they fail. Why? Because their heart and their thoughts are coming from the basis of... I see I'm a sinner. I see myself as a sinner. Right. And so everything they do out of that right. is guided by that sin-centered, sin-nature thinking. Right. And you don't have much of a choice. Because whatever you focus on is what you create in your life. Always. We, we've done, I mean, we've talked about it before. The things you focus on become important. The things you focus on become uh, your life. And even future casting. That's why even in the secular world, they say don't, don't think about where you're at right now. Think about where you want to get to. Because when you do, you begin to act like that person that you need to be to step into that position. Well, that's, and that's just biblical <clears throat> Training just applied to the business world. I think that should be alone, evidence enough alone to say your mind and heart are different things. Because I can think on things that aren't yet in my heart. And things can come to my mind that are in my heart that I didn't purpose to think on. Does that make sense? Well, I totally does. Because something that's in my heart, even though I don't think about it a lot right now, is the root gardens. But then yesterday... Kate left this little pamphlet out about natural <laughs> Florida garden, gardening, and I saw it, and my thought was, I'm just, I should stop everything right now. I'm going, I'm going to stop everything. I'm read mean. this pamphlet. <laughs> I, I just need to. And what it brought me life. I was like, woo, a pamphlet. I get yeah. to read it. And I read it, read it cover to cover. Yeah. Went back over, talked through some of the pointers uh, or point highlights on it, and I, what it was it. It was uh, the thought and heart. Very different. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I'm thinking. I thought you were saying, I, yep, I as in now him. I'm going into this more. I was thinking more. about him and it, reading the pamphlet and how much life it brought him and how excited he is and how that is in his heart, though it's not something he gets to think on often. It's not something he lends his thoughts to often because there are other things the Lord has asked us to do in the meantime. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's not in his heart to do. Right. But in the meantime, he has things to think on and, and communicate um, that the Lord has asked him currently to do. Mm -hmm. So the same goes with, um, I'm going to give an example. We believe that uh, spanking is okay. Okay. However, I we think live you in just a just got us kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a sad day, but it's the truth. So we believe spanking as a consequence is okay. And that's for a parent to decide. Abuse, not okay. Spanking, okay. Um, so one day um, there was a report on, on television and they were talking about um, uh, us... Uh, this this couple being arrested for spanking their child and really normal couple and all this and the first thing i this like nudge was like oh how could they spank their child now i believe in spanking my kids re receive them if needed you know what i mean but i re uh, all of a sudden i had this like oh, spanking's wrong that was the first thing that came to me and i was like what and so something had snuck in through what I was seeing, through what I was hearing, through what, right? Where the meditations were that I didn't know mm -hmm. that, that were there, but my mind was not aware yet. So already in my heart was something stirring up that, that had right. been going in that, oh, this is wrong, but it hadn't alerted my mind. Right? You can do that with offenses. <laughs> you can do that with thought patterns towards people and places that you don't know that we call them thought patterns, but you don't even know you think them until your heart alerts you that you do. Well, that's why I think Pro Proverbs says, guard your eyes for it is the wellsprings of life. Mm -hmm. Things that you watch make such a big difference and plant things within like that that you're not even aware of until it bubbles up. And yeah. then what do you do? You got to take, you got to recognize, ah, there's, there's a weed in my garden. Right. I need to uproot this. How do you do that? 
by diving into what the word says. Yeah. And believing lies, enough, guess what? Bad. Isn't new for the good to of your child. Uh, human beings. Yeah. If you look at Genesis chapter three, what did they what was the thing that took them down? A lie. They believed a lie enough to take an action and it created sin in their life. Mm-hmm. Another one big today is the word hate. People have like slapped hate on everything, right? Hate speech, hate people, hate whatever. Did you know hate is in the Bible? <laughs> They've got, there's actually things that the Lord hates and there's things that he wants us to hate. Hate is not a sin. And yet, if you asked most kids and even adults today, is hate a sin, what would their response be? Yeah, obviously. They'd be like, yeah. Oh, we serve a God a of love. And yet, the definition of love is love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. And that's out of And yet, apart Romans from the word, 12. someone would tell you hate is a sin. That's Romans 12, 9 that she was just reading. Uh, the same thing is listed, though, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter. Yeah. It talks about love-hating. Yep. Yeah. It's multiple spots. You cannot love without. one without hating the other. And if you p- try to play neutral on both, you get neither. And what do we or, live in? We live in a world of neutrality. you only get the negative. Yep. Yeah. And so if we don't give... Uh, definition to these things Mm -hmm. what isn't sin is touted as sin and what is sin disappears and is misunderstood and has power because no one actually knows what it is or what it is that leads to it and so here you're going to be paying the payment of death for sin just because you don't even know what it is and that you're participating with it Mm -hmm. even one more is if you do what you know is wrong, this is immorality, okay? Immoral things. If you ask someone the definition of immoral, a lot of people can't tell you what it is. Or they're saying immoral, that's having sex with your neighbor. (laughs) Yeah. And that's it. They're like, oh, man, that's that's pretty immoral. That's immoral. immoral. That's it. The Bible has lists of what's immoral. (laughs) Immorality. What is immoral? We need to know what that is. We don't get to make up what it is. Oh, that's immoral. And then he sums it all up with, if you do what you think is wrong, that's sin or immorality. Mm -hmm. So if you are sinning against your own thoughts of what is wrong, guess what you're doing? You're sinning. Can you imagine that you could sin within your own thinking, your own standards you set for Mm -hmm. yourself? And then you're like, that's wrong. I'm going to do it anyway. (laughs) What? (laughs) And he's like, so just to sum it up, if you think it's wrong and then you go ahead and do it, you're sinning. And the flip then is also true if you know what your right to do, what the right thing is to do, and you choose not to do it, that also ends up becoming sin. Immoral. Mm hmm. Yep. So it's it's when you know what's right to do and you don't do it, or you know what's wrong to do and you do it, that is sin to you. Now, it may not be listed as sin in the word, right. but it will bring you down that same path to resisting sin, what is right to and doing what is wrong. Death. Mm-hmm. And just like uh, for Smith Wigglesworth, he wouldn't allow himself to read the newspaper. Is reading the newspaper sin? No. But are you able to guard your eyes for it's the wellsprings of life? reading the things that they're putting in there, unless it's like the Epic Times or something like that, it's going to be very, very difficult and it will bring you on a path to sin or to believing lies, which cause you to react in ways that you shouldn't because it's outside of reality. And so for him, he would say, when I read the newspaper, it makes me feel, it makes me dirty. It's not sin. It makes him dirty on the inside. When I read the Bible, it makes me clean. So I'm going to stick with the Bible because I like to be clean. Like, it's just simple, easy. And so we have to help ourselves begin to think about what's going on. What, the habits that we've we've fallen into, because sin is sneaky. It tries to slowly make itself a habit. You never see anyone, I shouldn't say that, almost never do you see the enemy work in someone's life 
where they're not struggling with something at all, and then bam, bam, it's there, and they're like, oh, no, no, I had, oh, it just hit me. That that hardly ever happens. Sin is sneaky. It follows the devil, the father of lies, and so it's little lie here, little lie here. Another building block with this perspective, with this, this is your new reality. This is who you are, and it begins to be this slow thing that is built over a period of years. And I can look at people that have had a uh, major sin in their life and we all are like, oh, right. what it, it wasn't that there was nothing and all of a sudden one day it was like, bam, there it was. It had been going on for a long time. Well, it was something they didn't deal with from a very young age. So for those of you, because this is the Root Bible Academy adult version for those of you that have kids at home. Sin is not cute. Sin is not cuddly. Doing what they know is wrong isn't something we can laugh off anymore. This is the initial building blocks that's easy to wipe out with the truth before that massive stronghold has been built in their life. Those of you that are grandparents, you have the open door to speak into your your grandkids' lives more than even the parents do, it seems like. What grandpa and grandma say sticks, even if they repeat what mom and dad say. It's so irritating as the mom and dad. You're like, what? Or they say you can do something. like, we don't do that in the family. Oh, grandma and grandpa said. Yeah. What they say sticks, right? And so... As a grandparent, as an aunt or an uncle, you're not around the kids all the time. Yeah. You still have that open avenue to continue to reinforce who they are and begin to tackle those lies in their life when they begin to to react wrong, to speak wrong, to believe wrong about themselves or the world around them. Like, hang on, that's not how we think. You're a Christian, right? This is your reality. Arm yourself with the word. If you don't know it, grab your phone. Hang on. I just saw you're struggling with this thinking. Let's look up a verse. We're going to memorize it today. You're hanging out with me today. By the end of the day, we're going to have a verse memorized. You ready? Let's go. And you look it up, find the verse, and work on it. And that continual refocusing on the word, which the Bible says uh, you can wash your mind or your thoughts with the word. It's a cleansing. It, it's a renewing. It's a removing of the old ways, the old thought patterns, the sin habits, and putting in what is so much stronger. Has all the power of heaven backing it up. You're putting Jesus in. The well, word is Jesus. I love that Jesus. it says water because if you put a seed in, which is Christ Jesus, that's the new seed. That's how we become a new creation, that new seed. Uh, comes into us when you water that seed you expect good results just like you would in the natural if you don't water a seed what could you possibly expect for it to produce okay that everything has been put in us but we are responsible of whether or not it will produce now going back to sin that's why we have so much great fruit come out of our root reboot yeah is because they know what's right and then it's just word 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 water water, water, the the seed seed is already already in them second second peter chapter one verse three tells us that yeah that everything we need for life of godliness has already been deposited in us through his divine power and so it's already there it's a seed dormant waiting to be hit with the water of the word. Yeah. It's why discipleship is so important. Mm-hmm. Just uh, uh, putting salvation, that seed into people and not discipling them and how to water that seed is cruel. People need both the seed and to be watered. Otherwise, that mm-hmm. seed lies there dormant. And though they are a new creation and have all of heaven available to them, they have no access to it because no one has taught them how. Okay, when we started gardening, it was a sorry sight. <laughs> it, was, it was still kind of a sorry sight, but it's well, less sorry. <laughs> like, it's just spreading. It's but just... we didn't we didn't know anything about it. We just put mm-hmm. seed in the ground, thought that should work. <laughs> yeah, my my brilliant no joke this is for real. 
I, I would plant things that I'd never ate or ne- had no idea what they were. It's just so they would grow up and then start producing fruit so we'd have to figure out how to use it. That's how we did learned eggplant. I never had eggplant. Yeah. I never heard of eggplant. We like, Why it's an eggplant it and it's purple, <laughs> I still can't figure out. It's this purple long thing. doesn't look like an egg. It's purple. I was like, okay, we got to try that. That's just so weird. We got to do it. So we grew it and then I'm scrambling on all recipes like eggplant recipes and now we have some fantastic grilled eggplant recipes but, but that's same, how it started the same was, goes with someone who's starving and all you hand them is seed good luck they've never used seed they don't know what to do with seed mm-hmm. right you're like here you have, have everything no tools. you need right here you've got an apple tree so delicious you've got an orange tree, right mm-hmm. and you hand them these seeds and you're like okay be blessed whoa another one we got 14 gardens started check Right? Like, like we tout salvations, which that is good. I'm not saying, I'm not judging, mm-hmm. but at the, it doesn't stop there. There must be discipleship. They must know the watering mm-hmm. of the word so that seed and everything in them can come to life. Mm-hmm. It never stops at salvation. Not one place in the word. Not one place. We, it is important, but it does not stop there. And it can't with our kids either. Well, Jesus himself, go and make disciples of right. all nations, right. not salvations, not converts. It was disciples. And so if you focus just on that first step, you're missing the great mandate right. that everybody touts. You're missing the whole thing. Yeah. Don't be so busy being a disciple that the enemy convinces you that's the only place you should ever be. You can both be a disciple and be discipling. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you're going three years into salvation. You're ready. According to Paul. Okay, nobody's going to hand babies babies. I'm not handing a six-month-year-old baby a three-month-year-old baby. That's not going to happen. That's not how it should happen, right? But when my kids get to four and five and they know how to properly hold a baby, they know how to go get the things that baby needs, we put them right into action, don't we, moms? Any moms out there, give me an amen when they're old enough to go help, when they're able to engage. And that's exactly how the Bible compares the body of Christ, is we then help raise those babies in Christ, those who have been mm-hmm. seated, so they know how to unlock and release everything that God's put in them through that new seed, that sacrifice in Christ that's given us new life and everything we need to live it. Now back to sin. How many of you would say witchcraft is a sin? Okay. And mm-hmm. yet, how many of us watch movies with witchcraft in it? Okay. There, there's, there's, there's that that balance. Now, you ask kids, is witchcraft a sin? Yes. Do you want to watch this movie with witchcraft in it? Yes. <laughs> it's usually the second yes. It's a whole lot louder. <laughs> like, like, okay, why? Okay, okay, great. Now, is rebellion a sin? Well, the right kind of rebellion, right? You know, like, what well, is it? Well, the Bible says rebellion is, is as the sin of witchcraft. Right? So you've just identified witchcraft is sin. Yeah, witchcraft is sin, right? You've just identified what rebellion is sin. Yeah, I'm going to go watch a movie with witchcraft in it, and I'm going to not do what mom says. Or allow our kids to watch shows where they know so much more than the adults, and they operate in rebellion the entire time, mm-hmm. and then ex- wonder why our kids are having so much problem um, obeying Right. What you know? Why are you so wise in your own eyes? What's going on? This is not who you are. This is not how we act, and it's again because we're not guarding their eye gates or our own, or our own, and we're planting these thoughts of I, I can't tell you how many thoughts or how many thoughts, how many Christian people I've talked to that some of their favorite favorite shows revolve around adultery and death. Or rebellion. <laughs> and you're like, what? How can that be your favorite? Sh- are you a Christian? What are you watching? What are you med? They're like, I can't wait for tonight's show. Tonight's show, they're gonna do a little. I'm like, no, I don't. That's too much for me. I don't even want to know that. Now here's no. where the line comes, because then people, our children, ourselves, will say, watching fill in the blank is not a sin. Would that be correct? Yes. Watching fill in the blank is not a sin that we can directly see from the word. But we can see very clearly that watching other sin can be a hindrance that leads to sin in our own life. And that's huge. That's the entertainment realm. That's who you hang out with. That's If you're drawing 
your life and your eye gates are more focused uh, in the world, on the things of the world, as entertainment, as as relaxing time, re- relaxation, mm-hmm. right? Then you're just increasing the amount of water you have to do to and, and work you have to do around that seed to keep anything else from growing and maturing and then God being responsible to cut it off because you didn't. It'd be like that like that first verse we, we looked up in Proverbs 26, like a madman shooting deadly arrows or arrows, flaming arrows of death. Yeah. Sitting on the sidelines watching this madman continually shooting fiery arrows of death. And you know your kids, you probably know yourself. After watching that for a while, you're like, I could probably do that. That actually looks kind of fun. Those flaming arrows, the way they arc through the sky, that's actually kind of cool. It's, it's kind of entertaining. I, I'm enjoying this. And then you're like, you know what? I'm not going to be like the madman, but I am going to go shoot some arrows that are on fire. And what, what, step in. And what does it do? Because you're entertaining those thoughts, it all of a sudden makes those actions less appalling, right. less less disgusting. And so then that's exactly what we're talking about, the taking the steps to sin. That's how exactly same path it takes. Well, it's not that big of a deal. I'm just going to, you know, lie to lie to my kids right now because I just don't want to deal with all the questions that are going to follow if I bring up the one quick sentence that this is the truth and I know what's going to happen and I don't want to deal with that. And so I'm just going to, blanket it over or do like what Adam did in in Genesis 3. God's like, where are you? I was hiding because I was naked. He leaves out the whole part. I ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He's like, I'm just hiding, like circling the truth. We're not going to go there. And and what ends up getting him more in more trouble? So then what did he do? This because we were just talking about this. What does he do then? And after God's like, yeah. What and he calls him back on the carpet again, and he's like, instead of taking ownership, like I'm sorry, God gave him multiple choices to be like, I messed up, I messed up bad. Let me tell you what I did. We forgive me. Let's work this out. Instead of doing that, instead he tries to circum circle it or circumvent the truth. Doesn't work. So then what does he do? Pass the blame. It's not my fault. I did, I wasn't. I'm not the one responsible for. Did you see what they did? They did it too. I mean, just as bad as me. And what do we see as a tendency in our kids? Circumvent the truth. We're going to circle around it. It's not my fault. You see what they did? What they did was worse than them. Mm -hmm. It's just like Adam. It's the same things that ended up getting Adam and Eve kicked out of the Garden of Eden. it's, It's way more serious than we think. And so we either have to nip it in the bud at a young age in whatever role that God has given us, whether it's being in children's ministry, whether it's being an adult around families with kids or having our own kids. We got to nip it in the bud and our own and the kids as quickly as we can, or we're going to set them up to have the same struggles that maybe you or I have As an adult, where that sin mentality is so ingrained in areas, you're doing your best to live like Christ in all these other areas, but there's that one thing that just keeps coming back, seems to raise its ugly head, and you don't know how to fight it off. I don't know if any of you are experiencing that in any way. I know a lot of Christians, they try to gloss over that, and they're just, let's just focus on the good, because I have this stronghold of sin in my life, that I don't know how to deal with, how about we deal with it at a young age in our kids, in our grandkids, in our neighbor kids? You have more avenues to sow into lives than you realize. And we can't just gloss over these things saying, oh, it's cute, it's funny, it's not that big of a deal. It's, It's not exactly sin. I mean, I know it leads to sin, but... It's not sin, so we'll just let it slide this time. And we really have to 
get hardcore on it. The world, even people in the church will say, that's being a little too hardcore. Don't you think you can let your kids have some fun by experimenting and playing with some of these things? If right you now, keep them from sin, then they're just going to go and experiment with sin in crazier ways when they get older because they you don't know, let them do it at oh, home. Oh, you hear that all the time. Oh, my gosh. But, okay, let's compare this. The Bible calls that you have been redeemed out of the dominion of sin. Mm -hmm. That means you're under a new dominion, but you get to decide. No longer does sin have dominion over you. You've been translated into a new kingdom where God has dominion in your life. Mm -hmm. Not in everyone's life, in your life. But because sin no longer has dominion, you still have the choice for sin to have dominion over you. You could return. Remember mm -hmm. when they were in Egypt and they wanted to return to slavery? Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that you sounds know, like, pretty messed oh, up. Oh, this is hard. Everything's being provided for us and it's so hot. You know, like, let's go back and eat nothing and garden and be slaves and be whipped. Like, it's the same idea. They were under a new dominion. They crossed over. God was now their father. They were under protection. They had the fire. They had the cloud. They had everything they needed. And yet they murmured and complained that they wanted to be under the dominion of what they knew before. Okay, so the same idea is this with our families, our kids, ourselves, is which will you place yourself under the dominion of? And when you let things slide outside of the word of God, mm -hmm. you start to slide into where you position yourself to be under the dominion again of sin. You can see it in our world today, the way that immorality has slipped us into this thinking that like, oh, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, that's okay, where we're almost to where we want to put ourselves under the dominion of world leaders, well, one world order because it's just more comfortable. Things just slipped and slipped and slipped. And though we were under the dominion of God and freedom, as things slipped, people have chosen to be under the dominion of man and sin. The very same thing starts on the playing field of our hearts and our homes. When we have been delivered out of the dominion, let's remain delivered. So although all things are available to us, we want to remain strict in under the dominion and the life-giving power of God. And anything that looks different, immorality, uh, recklessness, rebellion, let's get it under the word so that we don't slip back under the dominion of sin, that we don't choose to go the route of having sin have dominion over us, but we remain free from sin mm -hmm under the dominion of the Lord God Jesus Christ, right? So that is, you can compare so much of the word because God is in everything to what you see naturally around you. And this is why every little thing is important. We see every little thing not being addressed in our country and where we've gone because of it. The same thing happens into our lives. If we're not continually surrendering and it's life-giving, it's not torturous, it's life-giving. If we would have took the little things that were happening in our country, we would never be here now. Mm -hmm. And so if we do that with our kids, if we do that in our hearts now with everything that's new, that he's empowered us to do this, if we can take our emotions, if we can take our feelings, if we can take our thinkings and constantly wash it with the word of God, then we are choosing to remain under the dominion of life which gives life, which comes with promises, and we are refusing to let ourselves slip or willingly walk under the dominion of death. Mm -hmm. That's huge, which is sin, right? The, the payment for sin is death. The dominion of sin is what we've been delivered out of, but that doesn't mean we can't choose right. to ha let it have dominion over us again. So let me go super simple, and we'll just show you, because some of you now are thinking, wait, are they really thinking that I am a sinner and we <laughs> are hoping to do enough right to be able to get what God promises in the word? No. And it's it's really, here's the, here's the key. Ready? Going back to the simple, we are a three-part being. When we got saved, the Holy Spirit came in and made one part brand new. It's what the word says. Just like with Adam and Eve, when they sinned, the Bible said they died. They didn't physically keel over and die. Right. When you got saved, you did not become a 70-year-old man, right? That'd be awkward. Or your physical super Christian. Your physical body did not change. Yeah. Yeah, instantly transported to how you looked when you were 21. Right. No, that'd be <laughs> weird. Anyway, your physical outside didn't change, right? I so we know that didn't that happen. That wouldn't be good. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> and we know our soul didn't change. Our mind, our will, and emotions. Now you had a new desire for what was good, right. but there still was that habitual thinking uh, in what your you head knew. of this is how I am. This is how I act. This the is how I react. And, and so you had that still there and which leads to almost the war within yourself. Right. Okay. Like Paul said, Paul, my God, my yeah. falsetto today. Oh, oh my word. <laughs> like Paul said, that the thing that I want to do, I do not do. And the thing that I do not want to do, I find myself doing. That's in Romans. He's talking about the war within himself. As he's Why? transitioning into his new life in Christ and on, right. and getting that transformation happening, he's like, what's going on? So that's he takes you on a journey. Romans 5 is all about, uh, Romans 5, 6, about salvation. Uh, and then it goes into some transition of the fight between. And then Romans 8, here's your new world realities, your yeah. new kingdom reality. In, in reality, so, you can see that in babies that don't want to become toddlers, right? I want to be an adult, but I want you to keep holding me and feeding me my bottle. I want you to be an adult, right? There's this mm -hmm. transition of growing up in Christ For every that is real. Older preschool slash early elementary always right. have a stage where they're like, I want to be a baby again. And yeah. you, they start talking with baby talk and they do. And you're like, what are you doing? <laughs> that is not who you are. But that appeal to who they were yeah. is back. Right. And so our soul, our body... We're not made new. Spirit made new. Now, our soul is our mind, will, and emotions. That's the chooser. Right. That's where the where the mind and the heart mindset are two different things. of before may still be lingering, while the spirit that is made completely new is working to it and with the Holy Spirit to illuminate those wrong thinking patterns and begin to build new Christ-centered thinking patterns, sin not sin-centered. Right, sin-dominated thinking patterns that were reliant on a cursed world form of thinking. And, you have a whole new set of thinking that's going to take some transformation. Right, and so like, Romans 12, 1 and 2, that's why it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's not a that, not that was going through. God did not do make you brand new on the inside. That's what some people have. Why would I need to be transformed if he already made me brand new? That doesn't make sense. He must not have done his job completely. He did it so far, and now I have to pick up the ball and finish <laughs> what he started. And you tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's how we act. Right. So many of us. Man, my voice is having a fun heyday here today. Uh, look, Tara that's just how wants we to act. tell you how good All it right. sounds. All right, I'll cut myself off for it. Tara, I'll only let you speak as long if you use your falsetto. I can't. You, I, I, my face is hurting from laughing already. I had a hard time with the neighbor comment. I don't know why. Um, Immorality. Really good. <laughs> anyway, what I was going to say was when it comes to that internal war, like after my spirit was renewed and my body, basically my mouth mostly, was not, <laughs> you know, there would be these moments where like words, things would come out. And as they were coming out, I could almost like hear and feel my spirit being like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Bring that back, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Or like yes. now. You know, it doesn't happen as much, thank you, Lord. But yes. yeah. now when it happens, it's there's not as much grace with the spirit. He's right. like Shut No. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I said no. You know, like or sometimes I'll be like mid and it'll just you know, you get stronger. Like you yeah. strengthen your spirit yeah. and you start to really put that body down more yeah. and more and, mm -hmm. and so it gets gets easier. But at first you really start to like actually physically feel that separation and it's, yes. it's awesome but you also have to like you have to it's work you have to know mm -hmm. what's happening otherwise it, 
it does feel well, uncomfortable. If you don't know what's happening, it's like, well, I'm not going to do that. That's, you know, right. <laughs> that's works. That's, you know, that's, that's right. not God. You know, he wouldn't want me to feel uncomfortable. I know when I say it out my mouth, it sounds unreasonable, but you would be surprised at how many people think that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it shouldn't be difficult. No, it's I'm a Christian. To... So my life always has to be easy. And right. the easiest yeah, path right. is going to be God's path for my life. And that's yeah. so opposite of what the word says. I love that you yeah. said that the Holy Spirit often because I'm way past the point and I still have the Holy Spirit correct things that come out of my mouth. And I'm way past the point as far as growing up where I should be according to Paul, according to the word. I'll say things and he's like, oh, how do you feel? You feel better now? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, you're going to have some yeah. undoing of what you just That's did. Weird. So, Those like, are the same words you use with me when I let <laughs> things out of my mouth. I, I just think that what the Holy Spirit says to me, I says to him, how do you feel? You feel better now that you let that out? Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how yeah. I feel now. You want to keep going? You feel better? Right. Yeah. It yeah. used to be like, oh, you know, you're, you know, it's all right. You know, correct yourself, apologize. And now it's yeah. like, your yeah, mouth. but it's like the difference of that's so good. It's like the difference of how you would speak to a baby and how you speak to your 11 and 12 year old son mm -hmm. now or daughter. Now, right. Like to a baby, you're like, oh, no, that's not right. You know, the correction, gentle. Mm -hmm. And then by the time they're to the point where they know better, how you talk to them is different. And the Holy Spirit's relationship with us is so similar. That's such a good point. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's a great sign of spiritual maturity, maturity and yeah. spiritual growth is when he begins to deal with you differently. Right. It's not always fun. I know kids when they're like, well, how come you dealt with them? It's not like you deal with me. <laughs> well, how come they get right. off and they get a small and they oh, yeah. get a Older whatever. kids versus younger kids. Mm -hmm. How come they don't have to? How come they didn't mm -hmm. And we it, see that know? same thing in the body of Christ when God's oh. trying to push people into spiritual maturity. They're like, yeah. well. How come that's not a big deal with with God with them? How come they get to do that? What what, what, is, what why can't I do that? It's not, whatever. And it's so, it's the adult trying to act like a toddler, put on his dirty diapers again, and start sucking his thumb. <laughs> Awkward. Don't do that. <laughs> but it's it's the same idea as your young children wanting to do adult things, but they can't because they have to be prepared to do them. The same is in the kingdom. Even though we've been given everything, there's a development and a growing process in us that prepares us to walk things out. Now, everything's available to us right away. All authority is available to us right away. But we even see in the word when people tried to use their authority without knowing who they were in Christ, it didn't go well. Doesn't mean that the authority is not there. It doesn't mean that the healing's not there. It doesn't mean that the provision's not there. But it does mean that you don't know yet. You have not matured in him yet. Like a baby knows how to swallow, but you're not giving them, you know, uh, water and soda and right because they're not ready for it yet. You're not. They know you're how to chew. You're not giving them steak. Bottle. You know, it's it's the Holy Spirit has a growing up process to do in us, and we. You know what? We get to decide how expedited that is. Mm -hmm. because the more we're in our word, the more we're with him, the more we're teaching our, let's, we can expedite it for our children as far as in the spiritual realm, knowing their word, knowing how to take uh, emotions and thoughts captive, know, knowing these things now mature them quicker in the spiritual realm, which is why I believe the Bible is unclear on aging. Because, you know, Timothy, though he was young in earthly years, Paul's like, don't let him judge you for that. Because he had matured in spiritual things because he had chosen to. He learned from Paul. He wouldn't relent. He went after these things. He wanted God. And we can give that opportunity for us. There's no reason after three years of knowing the Lord that we can't be teachers, Paul says. But that's diving in. That's not relenting. That's taking authority over our mouths, our thoughts. That's allowing the, uh, the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us and no longer controlling our own lives. We can do that for our homes and our families. Mm -hmm. That can be normal. And they can be mature spiritual beings at 10, 12, 16. And we don't have to live like the world where teenagers are difficult, where teenagers don't know who they are and struggle with identity. No, when they know the voice of God, when they've matured in spiritual things, it affects the natural. When you're mm -hmm. under the dominion of life, everything in the natural 
reflects being under the dominion of life. When you're under the dominion of sin and death, everything in your natural life reflects that you are under the dominion of sin and death. And our families, our lives will reflect one or the other, which is why we defend the right to be under the dominion of life with everything that we have and teach our children, teach those that we lead to salvation the very same thing relentlessly because it's different. Mm -hmm. The dominion of darkness and the dominion of light, the life does not look anything like the other. And helping our kids realize that and stop living in this gray area, identifying intruders that are trying to come in from the dominion of death that leads to sin is the largest victory we can give to ourselves and our families because it will keep us living under the dominion of life, bringing water to that seed that gives everything that's available to us life as it comes out and through us, through our 12 year old, through our eight year old, through our four year old, right? Because the spirit, the spiritual realm has no age. We can grow up in spiritual things by identifying what God hates, and what's what puts us under the dominion of sin and what God loves and what he's given to us so that we can live a life that reflects the dominion of life. Which one will you choose, right? Every day, all day, where's this emotion leading us? Let's find out what the word says. Where's that thought pattern thinking us? Where's what you just said about your brother, your neighbor, someone at school? Where's that taking your thinking? Let's look in the word. What you just said about yourself, that's kind of revealing that your, your thinking about yourself is not lining up with how God thinks about you. Let's find out in the word what God thinks about you. Let's meditate on that. That's the dominion of life. I can see the dominion of death sneaking in here. Old thought patterns, worldly thought patterns that make death rule and reign in my life. That's not going to happen. Right. For, to, for a Christian, it's sin is no longer a problem. God already dealt with that. Right. Sin is a revealer of a problem, revealing that we do not think about ourselves the way that we need to. It's or not even so meditating on something other than life. Right, exactly. Well, it's revealing the problem that our thoughts, our intentions, our hearts, our belief systems about ourselves and others or our place in the world yeah. is off of God's plans. Yep. Yeah. And so when you see that sin in yourself, see the sin in your fer- friends, family. It comes it's, back to them not knowing who they are. It's, it's, a res- it's a revealer of the problem, a result of the problem that they don't know who they are. Yep. And it just goes back into, okay, who am I? Romans 6.6. 6. We know that our old selves were crucified with Christ. Old sinful selves. Old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. It's been done with. But hold on. Dealt with. What's the big word in that scripture? So that it might lose its power in our lives. The biggest little word in the Bible is might. He's equipped us with all things, but will we water it and use it? He's Mm -hmm. dealt with all sin, but will we choose to remain in that life and life abundantly where it has no power over us or won't we? So we're the only ones who can give sin power in our life. The power of sin, the power of death, the power of the devil has been broken in our lives completely through our partnership with Christ in his crucifixion. We've been crucified with him. We've been buried with him. We've been raised from him, and we're now seated with him at the right hand of the fathers. What Ephesians two six says that last one. Uh, so we've been crucified with Christ. What it says in Romans six six. All that has been dealt with. Now it's up to us to choose. I will not empower this in my life anymore. Right. And the only way you can do that is to continually. Wash your mind with the water of the word. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can see yourself and whatever situation or subject it is the way that he does. You only begin to think like somebody when you hang out with them. I enjoy President Trump. I don't think like him. Why? I don't hang out with him. Same thing with uh, Pastor Kate. 
when we got married, I definitely did not think like her at all. I liked her. He still doesn't think like I, I wanted to hang out with her. And now I can start to finish her sandwiches. I can finish her, uh, you know, other things. that Sandwiches! <laughs> I can, we can start to, she can expect how I'm going to react or what I'm going to say or what I'm going to desire even before I do sometimes. Because why? Because she now knows me. She can think like me. Does it mean she always thinks like me? No, she has the choice. I'm going to think about what he's, okay, he's going to be thinking this. And so I can, I can prep myself because I know he's going to want this or want to do let's this put or this whatever. this really clear. Mm-hmm. When the Israelites were delivered out of Israel, were they still slaves to Pharaoh? Yes or no? No. Once they were delivered out of Egypt, were they still slaves to Pharaoh? They've no, been they set were delivered free. out of the dominion of Pharaoh. Right? However, many of them still meditated on that life and even wanted to choose to return, which is why the Bible says there is no longer payment for sin. Was God going to send Moses to re-deliver them? No, he did it. So if they chose to go back, guess what? They went back. That's why the Bible says there is no longer any payment for sin because literally it's already been paid for. So if we live a life where we choose to go back, guess what? There's not any longer payment for sin. If we choose to go back under the dominion and the slavery of sin, that's up to us. But it has been completely dealt with and we've been given everything we need to no longer allow it to have any dominion over us because it has none. Right? So I know that sounds so simple, but that's the exact same understanding our kids can see. Do you want to recross the Red Sea and go back to under the dominion of the devil? Or do you want to live free in God, even though it seems difficult right now? In the big things and the little things. Right. Not just letting things slide like we've been talking about. Right. But dealing with those little things. Yep. The little foxes that spoil the vine is what uh, Proverbs says. Ugh. So any questions on little foxes, is something really sin, something you're dealing with with your kids or in your own heart? I wanted to end with lying if we didn't get there and it would take another 20 minutes to really wrap that up nice and see how despicable it is. (laughs) Despicable lying. uh, But it's true. If you can put lying with murder, it just shows the authorship is the same. Wait, wait, no, I said we're not going to get there. there. We could get there, but we're not getting there. Any... (laughs) questions. We feel like these are not things that maybe are readily talked about with parenting and and understanding our sonship. And so we'd like to talk about things because nobody else does. So (laughs) any questions at all before we pray for you and go or something you want to talk about or discuss, or you think this would be good to add anything like that before we go. Okay. You guys are so cute. It's hard to let you go. (laughs) Okay. You want to pray? Yep. Let's do it. God, I thank you Mm -hmm. that you have completely delivered us from all sin. Yes. That there is no power of sin left in anyone who is watching this lives if they've given their life to you. Yes. That they have been crucified with Christ and sin no longer has any power in their life other than what they've given to it. Show them how to close that door. Mm -hmm. Show them the avenues that you want them to take, the verses that you want them to stand on to find and step into the freedom that you've already provided for them. For themselves first, and then be able to guide others in every sphere of influence along that same path in love, in peace, And to truly love them, not tolerate the sin anymore, but help guide them and walk with them in finding freedom for themselves. Help us to be different than the world. Help us to stand out, to really let you draw all men unto you through our lives because our lives look like yours. 
Teach us how to walk holy. Teach us how to put you first in all things, even when our thoughts or our emotions would scream otherwise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, we love you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in. Mm. Thanks for your jumping in, Miss Tara. We love to hear the response. Bye. Nice to hear your face. Yes. Okay. (laughs) We love you all. All right. Tune into the podcast if you missed it. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.